Ice Age Manny the mammoth was headed the wrong way. The other Ice Age animals were migrating south, but Manny avoided the crowd. So did a sloth named Sid who was hiding from some angry rhinos. Just pretend that I'm not here, said Sid, ducking behind Manny. Manny warned Sid to stop following him, but it didn't work. Soon the rhinos caught up with him, ready to flatten Sid for ruining their salad earlier. They didn't want to eat him, but they did want him dead. Don't let them impale me, please, begged Sid. I want to live! Manny found himself defending the sloth. He didn't like animals who killed for pleasure. Manny caught the rhinos in his huge tusks and flung them away. Woohoo! We did it! cried Sid. He ran to hug Manny and sent them both sliding down a hillside. Well, you and me, we make a great team, said Sid. Manny ordered him to go away, but Sid was more determined than ever to stick with his protector. Manny asked if there wasn't someone else Sid could annoy. Friends? Family? Poisonous reptiles? Sid's family had migrated without him, on purpose. Manny didn't want to talk about why he was on his own. That night, Manny made himself a hut out of logs. The sloth was less industrious. He only gathered one stick. With my little stick in my highly evolved brain, oh, I shall create fire, Sid boasted. But he ended up sleeping in the rain. At dawn, on a ridge not far away, a human village was under attack. Soto, the leader of the saber-toothed tigers, wanted revenge on the hunters for wiping out half his pack. He told his lieutenant Diego to bring him the human's baby alive. If he failed, Soto would kill Diego instead. The rest of the pack attacked the men while Diego chased the baby's mother. He cornered her at the edge of a dangerous waterfall. But rather than surrender her baby, the woman held him close and jumped. Downstream, Manny and Sid were shocked to see a woman float to the shore in front of them. She had just enough strength left to push something onto a rock. Manny reached out and pulled the bundle closer. It was a baby. When Manny and Sid looked up, the woman was gone. Manny started to leave. But, but you just saved him, cried Sid. You can't leave him here. Manny said that he was still trying to get rid of the last thing he saved. Look, there's smoke, said Sid. That's his herd right up the hill. We should return him. Manny insisted that he and Sid were not a we and that he would not go. Fine, be a jerk, said Sid. I'll take care of him. He cuddled the baby and headed toward the smoke. We don't need that meany weeny mammoth, do we? He cooed. Manny scoffed. Sid couldn't even take care of himself, he said. Manny followed the sloth at a distance. As Sid climbed awkwardly up the face of the cliff, the baby's wrappings came loose. He started to slip. Manny complained that Sid was an embarrassment to nature, but he stood ready to catch the falling boy. Just before the baby reached Manny's outstretched trunk, he was intercepted by a leaping saber-toothed tiger. Diego only had the baby for an instant, though, before Manny decked him and took the child back. Diego could not challenge such a huge mammoth. Look, I'm sorry to interrupt your snack, but we gotta go, said Sid. Manny told Sid he would help bring the baby to its herd if Sid promised to leave him alone after that. Diego claimed he was only trying to take the child back to the humans himself. Manny didn't believe the tiger, but he did value his tracking skills, so Manny told Diego to lead the way. Diego headed toward the human settlement on the other side of the mountains, but the crying baby quickly got on his nerves, and Manny's too. Manny noticed that the baby was wearing a diaper, which might be filled with poop. <laughs> humans are disgusting, said Sid. Sid, the designated poop checker, found a clean diaper, but the baby still cried. Diego tried playing peekaboo, but that scared the baby. Finally, they decided he must be hungry. They found a melon, and after a scuffle over it with some dodo birds, the boy munched happily. That night, Diego crept toward the baby, but he was interrupted by a rustling in the brush nearby. It was two tigers from his pack, checking on him. Soto was impatient, they warned. Diego said to tell Soto he was bringing back the baby, plus a mammoth. The tigers wanted to attack Manny right then, but Diego insisted they would need the whole pack to bring him down. Diego picked up the trail of the humans who were nearby, but he pointed his companions the other way, through a tunnel in the mountain. Inside the mountain, there were icy caves that dropped off into ice slides. 
the baby slipped down one and the others had a wild ride in pursuit. Diego and Manny raced and Diego loved it. Farther down inside the mountain, there were caves covered in paintings. One picture showed a mammoth who looked like Manny, happy with his mate and baby. In the next, hunters held off the big mammoth and killed his family. Manny stared at the paintings and the others realized that this was his story. Manny touched the painting of the baby mammoth with his trunk, then picked up the human baby and hugged him. Outside once more, the animals were nearing their destination. Half Peak lay ahead and beyond it was Glacier Pass. Did you hear that little fella? Sid asked the baby. You're almost home. <laughs> then Sid noticed something odd. My feet are sweating, he said. The others ignored him. Seriously, my feet are really hot, he cried. Then the ground rumbled. Steam and lava surged up from underneath the snow, leaving only a few precarious bridges of ice. Diego leaped across a gap and urged the group to move faster. Sid said, Wow, I wish I could jump like that. Manny granted his wish by punting Sid to safety. Manny scrambled after him as a section of the ice bridge collapsed. At the back of the group, Diego made one more desperate leap to follow them. He didn't make it and was left hanging off the edge of a quickly melting cliff. Manny handed the baby to Sid. He inched back over the collapsing ice to reach Diego. The tiger fell, but Manny grabbed him with his trunk and threw him clear. Then the ice ledge cracked and Manny plummeted toward the lava. A geyser of hot air blew Manny and the ice shelf back up onto land, and Manny lay stunned but alive. Diego was stunned too by Manny's sacrifice. He asked why the mammoth had risked his life to save him. Manny said, that's what you do in a herd. You look out for each other. I don't know about you guys, but we are the weirdest herd I've ever seen, said Sid. That night, Sid accidentally started a fire when he struck a flint against the rock wall trying to make a drawing of a sloth. As the group gathered around the cozy warmth of the fire, the baby took his first steps. He toddled toward Diego and hugged his paw. Manny curled the baby in his trunk for bedtime, and Sid looked on admiringly. You know, Diego, I've never had a friend who would risk his life for me, the sloth said. Diego agreed that Manny was a good guy. The next day, as they approached Half Peak, Diego lagged behind, deep in thought. Finally, he made up his mind and rushed ahead to warn Manny and Sid. There was an ambush waiting for them. Diego had been under Soto's orders to get the baby all along, and he had lured the others back so the pack could attack them, he admitted. That's it. You're out of the herd, said Sid. Manny was furious. Diego apologized, but said they had to trust him to help them now. Manny was incredulous. How could they trust Diego? The tiger insisted he was their only hope of getting out alive. The pack of tigers was waiting impatiently for their promised meal. When Sid came in sight carrying a baby-sized bundle, several tigers jumped to attack. But Sid had skis hidden under the snow and led the pack on a high-speed chase. Finally, Sid dropped the bundle, which was quickly surrounded by tigers. Soto turned it over and found nothing but snow inside. The real baby was hidden elsewhere. Infuriated, Soto and the tigers raced after Sid, but around the corner, they found Manny waiting. Manny hurled a huge log and took out three tigers. He and Diego were ready to make a quick getaway, but Soto found them first. Diego told Soto to leave Manny alone. With his recovered henchmen at his side, Soto decided to fight them both. Diego tried to protect Manny, but Soto was too strong for him. Soon, Diego lay still on the snow. Sid and the baby appeared and distracted Soto for a moment. Manny threw Soto into a rock wall. He landed with a thud, and the dagger-like icicles above him fell to finish him off. The remaining members of the pack whimpered and ran away. Diego weakly raised his head. They had been quite a team, he said. Manny thanked Diego for defending him. Diego said that's what you do in a herd. Then Diego insisted they leave him there. If they didn't get the baby to the humans right away, they would lose their chance. The friends sadly walked away. At the mountain pass, the baby's father turned back for a moment, remembering his lost son. Then Manny appeared and solemnly returned the child. The father was overjoyed. After a goodbye hug for Manny and Sid, 
The baby smiled in his father's arms as the humans walked on. Diego limped over the hill just in time to wave a parting peekaboo to the baby. His friends ran to him. Sid even kissed him, and Diego didn't seem to mind. Manny offered Diego a lift. He declined, saying he had to save whatever dignity he had left. You're hanging out with us now, buddy. Dignity's got nothing to do with it. But I'll take that lift, said Sid. Manny told him to climb aboard, and the herd headed south for the best migration ever.